Hello, my name is Paula Malcolmson. I'm a Canadian dental hygienist practicing in London, Ontario at Fanshawe College, and uh, I work in education. And I'm Brooke Benton. I'm also a Canadian registered dental hygienist. I currently live and work in New York City as a clinical researcher at NYU College of Dentistry. And I am Dawn Smith from Northern Virginia, working at Howard University in the Department of Dental Hygiene as Associate Professor, Faculty, and Administrator. The title of our poster is Comparing Mannequin and Live Patient Dental Hygienist Clinical Licensing Exams for Entry to Practice. Does Dexter make the cut? Our poster reflects licensure and regulation in Canada as well as in the United States. As dental professionals, we understand the importance of licensure and regulation to public health and in the dental hygiene profession as its primary purpose to protect the health, the rights, and safety of patients and to ensure a standardized and regulated quality of care being delivered. In the United States, 38 states accept the mannequin-based exam, while the other states use live patient examinations for entry to practice requirements. While in Canada, dental hygienists become registered provincially after completing the National Dental Hygiene Certification Exam, as well as other jurisdictional requirements. For those that attend non-accredited schools, in addition to the National Board Exam, there's a Canadian Performance Exam in Dental Hygiene, which is known as the CPEDH, which is a two-part performance-based assessment which will assess the competency of entry to practice dental hygienist knowledge and skills in both a simulated base setting and an authentic clinical context delivered over two days. The background of dental hygiene regulation in Canada is governed at the provincial or territorial level. Some provinces have their own regulatory bodies, while others have jurisdiction under a branch of the Ministry of Health. In Ontario, the College of Dental Hygienists of Ontario, registration requirements include graduating from an accredited dental hygiene program, successful completion of the NDHCE and other insurance requirements. It is important to note that currently there is no clinical exam for entry to practice for new registrants who complete all registration requirements. Our literature review used dental and medical education databases to collect information. Live patient exams were considered the standard. However, during the pandemic, licensing bodies had, had a, to act accordingly to continuing license dental hygienists. Live patient exams were not possible during pandemic lockdowns. Therefore, licensing bodies began evaluating skills on mannequins. This would ensure licensing with no disturbance to the dental hygiene workforce. From this, we compiled pros and cons tables. So our findings suggest that there are pros and cons to both examination methods. While the mannequin exam tends to address ethical issues, standardization and calibration concerns, it is limited in its practicality for real life scenarios faced by dental professionals. Live patient exams provide a more wholesome view of the care process, but they do face ethical concerns, namely providing standard of care. Exam scores did not differ significantly between mannequin and patient groups. However, a first attempt passing rate was noted higher in the mannequin group. It led us to question whether an examination is even necessary when graduating from an accredited program. Should the education and experience gained through the course and clinical work not be considered sufficient for entry to practice? From our review, to determine the benefits and limitations of a live patient versus mannequin exam, a narrative inquiry of new registrants is recommended. A qualitative case study that solicits the personal experiences of new dental hygiene registrants allows the researchers to analyze and code themes from their responses. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for attending the Greater New York Dental Meeting.